Welcome to the ITV election interviews. It's the Greens and their co-leader, Sean Berry. Let's find out a little bit more about their campaign. This must be the climate election. The future won't get another chance. Why have one party leader when you can have two? Sean Berry and Jonathan Bartley both lead the Green Party. The Greens had hoped this election would be all about climate change. Around for almost 30 years, their policies are dominated by environmental pledges, which they say makes them different from the other traditional political parties. The Greens want a raft of measures to protect the environment and to get rid of nuclear weapons completely. On Brexit, they want to remain in the EU and are supporting the Lib Dems and Plaid Cymru by not putting up candidates in some seats. Sean, very welcome. What can the Green Party offer voters in next month's election? Well, it's quite clear from what we just heard that the choice in this election is between a Trump-inspired, Farage-enabled Tory Brexit and a group of parties who actually want to improve the lives of people in this country now, the Green Party has been a very strong voice for Remain, for more cooperation in politics. We've been leading the way with grown-up politics in this election, and we've been leading the way on being against austerity and being for the climate action that we need. We've been putting together some very big ideas and leading the agenda in this election so far, and I think people are really starting to take notice. We've had some of our most successful elections this year in the local elections in May and again in May in the EU elections too. We more than doubled our representation both times. We're ready to put more Green MPs into Parliament to be that strong voice for all the things that we stand for with integrity. On climate change, the other parties seem to be catching up. Does, does that mean you are still relevant anymore? I mean, I think the other parties are start, starting to take notice of the incredible climate movement that there is out there on the streets. We are so proud of the young people who are telling us that we have to take climate action now. And we're also um, ashamed that we haven't taken action sooner. Those young people, we can't say to them, you will grow up and, and you can take over and, and solve this problem. This problem has to be solved in the next few years. That's what the climate scientists are telling us. So this next parliament is absolutely crucial. That's why we launched our manifesto today with 10 bills that the Green Party MPs will bring to the next parliament. We'll be using whatever voice people give us to make that case because it's so very important. And none of the other parties are quite there yet. You've seen the spending plans of the other parties. They're not putting forward the level of investment we need, the Green New Deal that the Green Party is putting forward. So okay. we're not going to get there if, if we don't put more Greens into Parliament to hold those parties to account. We'll get on to that in, in, a, in a minute. From what you heard on tonight's debate, who do you trust more on the environment? Boris Johnson? Or Jeremy Corbyn? Well, it's impossible to tell from that debate because the question about climate chaos was relegated to the quick fire section. I can't believe that, that neither of those two leaders brought up the most important issue that we face alongside Brexit. I think it's just, it's, it's outrageous that everyone must have been at home crying out for, for Caroline Lucas or me or Jonathan Bartley to be there to hold them to account to bring up this most important issue. The young people that are out on the streets literally begging us to do something about this must have been feeling so let down. Let's talk about what you are offering voters then. You want to spend hundred billion a year for a decade on climate change policies, on getting this country carbon neutral by 2030. That is just a decade away. Is that really enough time if we if we don't even mention the money yet and we focus on the time scale? Mm. Can you really realistically do it in 10 years time? That is the time we have got. The, the scientists are very, very clear that by 2030 we have to become carbon neutral if we're not going to face a 50-50 chance of runaway climate chaos. I mean, in the Greens, we, we you know these are not targets that we take lightly. We, look, we don't look at them and give up and say, well, we can't quite make it. We look at them and we say, look, yes, we're going to have to. Yes, we can. And this is how. And, and it is about action at all levels. Conservatives cannot hang in there with a 2050 target. It's not good enough. Greens say we need to fill in all the gaps with community level action with huge investment in research and development to solve those final problems. We have to make the targets and we need Greens there making sure the other parties don't 
just leave them on the shelf like they have done for 20 or 30 years. What in practical terms will the money be spent on to ensure this country does go carbon neutral in a decade? So we're putting forwards £100 billion a year in investment. A lot of that goes into our homes. I mean, the thing that's been criminally neglected is the energy efficiency of homes. So many people live in cold, damp, expensive to heat homes and that needs sorting out and will improve everyone's lives and people's health in the process. This is one of the best investments we can make and it's a big chunk of our investment every year. Our energy infrastructure needs huge investment too. Our transport system, I mean the Conservatives have been investing mainly in big new roads for the past 10 years, for the past 30 years that's been the focus of most people's transport policies where our train system isn't good enough. Our buses have been cut back by nearly half and walking and cycling is absolutely neglected across the country. Big investments in transport are absolutely needed and the rest needs to go into industry and research and development to, to get that new technology that we need to get that final bit of the way as well as money for local councils so we can do community action and get more carbon neutral councils like uh, the pioneering councils in Stroud and Bristol where we've been pioneering, declaring a climate emergency and setting new targets and new action at a local level. What would you do to get more people buying and using electric cars? Electric cars are really important. We have to get away from um, diesel and petrol cars, but it isn't the main focus of a sustainable transport system. One of the best things you can do for sustainable transport is actually reduce the need to travel altogether by making sure people have their local services nearby, making sure that their, their libraries, their shops are not on the, the ring road, that the That's hospital in hasn't been moved away. Though, is it? It's quite easy to do that in the capital city. It's so we very need to be difficult to replacing the, the bus services that have been cut back. Rural bus services are virtually non-existent in parts of the country. We've literally got green councillors out there running bus services in order to give people who can't drive, people who get older, people who are um, unable to afford a car, unable to to get them to reach their public services at all. We really do, I mean, this is what we're getting at here, we really do need to transform our whole country in the next 10 years. We know how to do it, we just need to make sure we've got the will and the investment to make it happen your, and everybody pulling together across all our different communities. Your ambition to transform the country is in large part based on borrowing a lot of money. The, the majority of that 100 billion comes through borrowing. And these are good investments that will pay back over time and actually within the 10 years we'll start to if, see healthier communities and, and saving money on bills and all those things. These are very good investments we should have made a long time ago. What if it doesn't work though and that level of borrowing harms the economy because then we'll have a lot less money to spend on fixing the climate change we have problems. Borrowed we borrowed an awful lot under the current government. The amount we propose um, in the Green Party manifesto to put our borrowing up by is about the same as what the Conservatives have done since 2010. And if you look around, what have we got to show for that? Very, very little. Within a couple of years, you'll start to see a real difference in the country if the green investments start to kick in. This is, I think people are, are willing to listen to us now because they've listened to the other parties and they've seen no results so far and we're ready to take, take our seats in Parliament and push the other parties all the way that they need to go in this election. OK, I want to talk to you about the other parties and, and talk specifically about the Remain Alliance. In around 40 seats, you have stepped aside. You're asking voters to vote Lib Dems, not the Greens, in this election. Um, you both, both parties want a second referendum. You both have a Green fund, albeit at different levels of spending. Why wouldn't all your supporters in this election vote for the Lib Dems instead of the Greens? We're trying to promote a different way of doing politics. It's very, very healthy that we sat down with Plaid Cymru and the Liberal Democrats to make this arrangement because we needed to do something to stop the dangerous Tory Brexit that will do so much damage. And we want to see more cooperation in politics. We saw from the debate earlier how unhealthy it is to just have two choices. A pendulum swinging between two big parties is not a healthy way to do politics. We need to have more cooperation, more parties working together, more parties talking to each other with respect, with honesty and integrity about what's good for the country. And that's what we've done in, in getting together in this Unite to Remain agreement. We're trying to stop the, the, the disastrous crash out Brexit, get a strong group 
have committed Remain MPs in Parliament to finish off Brexit the democratic way with the people's vote and a final say. In the last Parliament, you had just one Green MP, Caroline Lucas. You're not risking not getting more by asking people to vote Lib Dems in certain seats. Um, in certain seats, the other parties have stepped aside for us as well. In key seats now, there are Greens who are the strong Remain choice in that seat. You can elect them to Parliament and you know they're going to do a good job for you. If the UK does leave um, the EU, um, isn't that putting this country in a stronger position to really push through some radical climate change policies and, and push them through much quicker than when you're working with 27 other member states? I think that's a red herring because climate change, air pollution, the big environmental crises we face do not stop at our borders. The way to tackle them is at an international level. We've got green MEPs in Parliament, in Brussels, making big changes to environmental regulations, helping to sort out agriculture, helping to sort out air pollution. The only reason we've seen any action on air pollution in our big cities in this country is because we've got agreements at the EU level that we're supposed to be meeting, and we're actually not meeting them yet, but at least the agreements are there and at least the MEPs are there arguing for that. I think it's really important that we do stay in the European Union for environmental reasons and for social reasons as well. A crash out Brexit would harm the economy so much. It would do so much damage and it's the people at the bottom in society who would suffer the worst from that. Your quick fire questions. <laughs> um, is it ever OK for climate change protesters to stop people going to work on public transport? I think Extinction Rebellion do a fantastic job and the point of their protests is to be disruptive but I is do not okay? agree with all of their tactics and obviously as a, as a green politician my job my part of the environmental movement is to get elected and change the laws and that's my part of the, the job there. Would you encourage young women into a career in politics given the abuse they could face? I, I'm asked a a lot by, by young women about what it's like to be in politics. And, and it is really difficult to say to them, it's all fine, go ahead, um, because it is a very toxic atmosphere in politics at the moment. Um, it's, it's getting worse as well, and I think that really worries me. But I think anyone who wants to stand up for their communities ought to get involved and get involved in a party like the Greens where you'll get a lot of support. Aside from the climate change problems and uh, the second referendum you want, what's your top priority? A, a one-word answer from you. I want to eliminate way. poverty. We need to bring in that universal basic inco income, raise the minimum wage to £12. That's the living wage that people deserve. Uh, at the moment, we've got a punitive welfare system designed to throw people into destitution. And that has to end. Pop Sean Berry, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.